Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar before the workshop, Measuring the Carbon Impact of Biogas and RNG Projects. Today, we have Shashi Menon, Brad Plyma, and Zach Van Cleef from uh, EFA Engineers joining us. But before they begin, I'm going to uh, turn things over to Patrick Surface, our moderator. And actually, really quick, Patrick, before you jump in, I'm going to just give a little brief rundown of GoToWebinar here. Um, you should be able to hear me. You should be able to also see slides. Um, you'll also use the GoToWebinar panel on the right side of your screen um, to adjust your audio, but also to ask your questions. We're going to have a, a large Q&A portion for today's webinar, so please put your questions in as soon as you have them using that questions pod um, that I've marked there on the slide. Um, we are also recording this webinar. The recording will be sent out tomorrow to everyone who's registered. We'll also be putting it up on the ABC website. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, and if you have any uh, technical issues, please just put them in the questions pod and I'll be able to help uh, you out with those uh, throughout the webinar here. So now I'm going to hand it off to our moderator for today, Patrick Surface, Executive Director of ABC. Patrick, please take it away. Great. Thank you so much, Caroline. And thank you all for being here today. Um, you know, for those of you who don't know the American Biogas Council is, and this is now officially our most popular webinar ever. We have hundreds and hundreds of people that have registered. I think we're we're close to a thousand for, for registered folks um, for today. I know that there are a lot of you who don't know who we are, and we're glad to have you. I know we've got a lot of members in the audience too. So we are the voice of the biogas industry in the U.S. We are a trade association dedicated to building more biogas systems, which means building more organics recycling, creating more renewable energy, uh, and the soil products that, that come along um, with those. We are almost represent about 400 companies uh, today with about 5,000 individuals that are directly connected with those memberships. And we're pretty proud of the diversity of the American Biogas Council covering all sectors of not only just the biogas industry, but even sectors that interact with the biogas industry, like the agriculture sector and the food processing sector and wastewater and all kinds of other things, renewable energy, soil products, all that kind of good stuff. So um, we're really happy to have you all here uh, today. Um, Caroline, you can move on to the next slide. I don't think that there's content to share, but I do want to say a couple things here. So um, this, is, this is a really big deal for us. I think this is carbon accounting is super important. Uh, in our society, it's becoming more and more important as we look at renewable energy, as we look at uh, looking at our impact on the climate and how to manage that and how to manage that in a way that is both environmentally friendly and economically friendly. And we have started to build mechanisms to be able to incentivize people and companies and projects that can lower carbon emissions by creating credits that you can sell for the benefit of, of taking carbon and reducing the amount of carbon emissions that happen. But the science behind that uh, is really needs a lot of development. We've done a lot of development, I think as a society for like solar and wind, for example, and figuring out what the carbon intensity of those renewable energy sectors are and other things. And there's been beginning work on how to quantify the carbon impact of biogas systems but it is definitely not complete. And as we look at policy being developed all around the US, we look at existing programs that are in place, we see a lot of gaps. We see a lot of things that are not being done either uh, correctly um, or completely uh, to really quantify what is the real carbon impact of an individual biogas project. And biogas projects are all different. So that means the carbon impact is all going to be different. So how do we create a mechanism where policymakers and governments can really feel certain that good science was used to measure the carbon impact of a biogas project. That's what we are creating with this project is that science, that accounting methodology uh, to determine the carbon impact of all kinds of biogas projects over the whole life cycle um, so that we can know how much carbon we're reducing, know when we're reducing a lot and get rewarded for that, and know when we're not reducing enough um, and, and adjust accordingly uh, in that respect. So the American Biogas Council and our board hired eco-engineers um, earlier this year 
to lead that development for us. So you can see um, Brad Plyma, uh, who's uh, president of, of EcoEngineers, Zach Van Cleve, who's our project manager for this project, and Shashi Menon, who's the CEO. I might have, Brad and Shashi, I might have mis, uh, misplaced your titles there, but Shashi, Shashi and Brad are leading the company. Um, Zach's leading the project here, and that's who you're gonna be hearing from uh, for the most of today. So we're gonna get into that tell you a little bit uh, more about this project to introduce it to you. And then there are gonna be lots of ways for you to engage because this is gonna be a year long project uh, to just do this one part of the project. We want you to engage with us. We want you to help us to figure out who's not here and who needs to engage in this because we want this to be a transparent process so that at the end, this is something we all can, can use. The ABC is developing this, but we don't plan to own it. We want others to use it. That's where we're really gonna get the benefit from this is if it really gets used. And that means by other groups that are doing carbon accounting methodology, uh, we are gonna be happy to share this with those and anyone who needs to use it. So uh, Zach, I think, I'm, I think I'm gonna turn it over to you and uh, take it away. Perfect, thank you, Patrick. And we could probably advance to the next slide. And... I think what we'll do, oh, yep, and we'll do, do one more too. Perfect, awesome. Again, my name is Zach Van Cleve, guys. Super excited to be here. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really neat project. I've been involved here for, uh, for the last month, a little over a month, and uh, we've, been, we've been kind of building, uh, the, I guess, the, the, the build or the base blocks here for this project. And today, uh, as Patrick said, we're gonna just, we're, we'll give you a little bit of taste on, on to, as to what the project is. Uh, cover a little bit about where we've where we've been, uh, where we're going to go, and and like Patrick said, uh, th those next steps, which are going to be uh, really really vital as uh, we get engaged with 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 all of you. So uh, yeah, the the agenda today um, again it will, it'll be it'll be brief, but uh, ho hopefully very informative and, and, and to the point. So uh, we'll start with again an introduction to what we're doing. And, and really the, the problem that we're trying to, to, to fix, to address, um, and a little insight there. Uh, we'll talk about uh, impact of biogas projects and a little bit about LCA, uh, which, which we'll lean on here in, in this project. Uh, and then we'll get into really, uh, like I said, the, 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 the three phases of the project. Patrick said it's, it's gonna go, you know, it'll be a year long project and, and we're, we're a little bit into phase one right now, um, but you know, I think we've got a, a great plan uh, put out. And, uh, and, and more than that, we've got really great people on, uh, on the eco side and, uh, and the ABC side um, that, that are, that are going to help drive this. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll finish with next steps. So I, I think that is the agenda. I won't take up too much because uh, Shashi and Brad um, are, are going to get kind of into the meat and potatoes. So with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Shashi. And um, yeah, again, thanks for, for attending. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, and thanks, Zach, and thanks, Patrick. Um, as many of you know, EcoEngineers has been uh, really invested in the success of the biogas uh, industry over the past decade. Brad and myself and the rest of the team here uh, we really like actively work um, in a variety of uh, ways in uh, in kind of like supporting the development of the biogas sector and through life cycle analysis a lot of our work has been life cycle analysis and um, even uh, feasibility studies like like various projects in uh, early stages of development and all the way to like even compliance and auditing systems so given that background we were we're definitely very very like honored and proud when um when uh, the, the American Biogas Council and Patrick uh, chose us to be a partner to lead this project. And we're very excited to be here. Um, you know, we're big believers in biogas. Uh, I kind of always think of biogas as the as the humble fuel. Uh, it does a huge amount of benefit. It provides a huge amount of like benefit to society. Uh, there's a superior waste management practice invariably associated with it. And uh, it's a clean source of fuel, but it doesn't always necessarily get the kind of attention some of the other um, fuel types get. So, uh, so I think um, you know what we've seen like over the past decade, as many of you know, compliance uh, markets in the in North America have really fueled the development of the biogas sector, and uh, there's been many pathways under the renewable fuel standards and the low carbon fuel standards in California, and this has actually resulted in a lot of projects being developed, money being invested, 
and uh, as a result we also see like you know superior like better manure management practices there's less flaring uh, there's more beneficial use of uh, of biogas almost all the cng in california is now rng and all this uh, came about as a result of these good policies and uh, but even these compliance policies uh, sometimes it set some arbitrary rules and arbitrary standards that allowed some projects to have pathways and others did not have a pathway. And um, and so, like, the, but, but even within these limitations, there was a big growth in the industry. And over the past five years or so, we've really been noticing a great deal of interest from uh, voluntary corporate uh, buyers to either purchase the gas or purchase electricity or purchase carbon credits from uh, biogas projects. And these buyers reported to a whole different set of rules. Uh, they were uh, reporting to CDP and science-based targets and, um, and other like you know, financial disclosure rules. And they, these rules also did not really have a, a clear pathway to allow biogas projects to uh, quantify their uh, environmental impacts. There were some private registries that did have some pathways, but even these, again, like were somewhat arbitrary and did not really address the wide variety of biogas projects that were really emerging from or has been emerging over the past 10 years. So this is really the problem that we've been uh, we, we, we are trying to address here. Uh, we're seeing a convergence of these voluntary markets and compliance markets. They both have gaps and we have a great opportunity to take the best from both of them and fill in those gaps and create like a comprehensive methodology that can actually do um, carbon accounting for all biogas project types and clearly measure and clearly articulate. So it'll be a tool uh, that project developers, buyers and sellers of gas can use to, uh, something that they, it's a ready to use tool that they can take off the shelf and apply to their project. And it can like kind of create more liquidity in the marketplace. So people aren't asking, okay, how will, how do I like kind of qualify this? Does it, yeah, I mean, you don't have a pathway in LCFS, you don't have a pathway under BCS. So how do I know what this gas does? And so that's the gap we're trying to address and that's the problem we're trying to fill. And as, uh, as, as Patrick said, um, you know, we are living in a world where increasingly there's a premium being placed on environmental declarations. And there's a lot of buy clean programs that are coming around. So in that context, uh, I think like, yeah, I definitely want to applaud the American Biogas Council for uh, sort of being a pioneer in this space and leading the way and taking control of this conversation and saying that hey we can actually like together as industry we can come together and create a framework that is acceptable to all and to create more liquidity in the marketplace that ultimately will drive to greater uh, project development and ultimately uh, greater clean fuel use so next slide please So I think like um, we've done some initial uh, look. So we, we you know we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We understand that there are some good pathways that exist currently under the California program or under other private registries. So the first thing we did was we took a very quick look over the existing pathways and tried to identify like, hey, what are some gaps that we can possibly address here? And uh, this is a short list of some of the things that came up with that first look. Um, and as you can see, and as many of you may already know this, that avoided emissions credits are not available for all manure types. They're available for dairies. Um, the cutoff date considerations can sometimes be a little arbitrary. What is the right one to use? Uh, what about uh, if a land, this is a landfill gas collection system, but they put in place a new system that has increased efficiencies. Do you get any additional benefits for that? Uh, what about uh, biosolids land divert, landfill diversion? Like if they're being sent to a landfill, if you divert that from a landfill, can you get credit for that? So there's like a whole variety of things. I'm not going to necessarily go down each of them in detail. That is the purpose of um, the workshop we are hosting in at Biogas Americas in Chicago next week. And, and that workshop is where we really want to go a little deeper into each of these with your input and with your participation and arrive at like some directionally get some um, get, you know get some sort of uh, idea on guidance on how to uh, answer each of these things and how to come up with a more comprehensive policy but i want to pause here for a minute and invite brad and you know he's been actively working on many of these project hands-on so brad what would you have anything you want to add to this no i, I think you captured it well shashi I, I think from the industry um how many of you have 
projects that don't fit nicely into the bow and the package of the tier one calculator that uh, the California Resources Board has. We've certainly seen a lot of that at Eco Engineers as well, whether that's poultry manure or some electricity pathways, uh, or you want to do something slightly different or your project maybe uh, you feel is more emission, has more emissions reduction than some of the assumptions in the tier one or tier two calculators that CARB has uh, prepared under the LCFS. The goal of this is to really take a much broader look at the industry as a whole and how do we address a larger uh, number of projects. Again, it has to be science-based. We have to maintain carbon accounting principles, but the goal is to be more, for this methodology, to be more supportive of the biogas industry as a whole and not just focused on narrowly focused on transportation fuels that go into the state of California. So the concept of what uh, the what CARB did under the LCFS program in California is really what that same type of approach we want to take to a bigger, broader overall industry, uh, biogas industry. Yeah, next slide, please. And just to continue that, we also took a quick um, cut at the um, existing available pathways under voluntary registries. And there's a whole uh, bunch of voluntary registries that do have biogas pathways right now. And we found that the, the two big categories under which some of these gaps can be uh, addressed are bound, setting boundaries and questions about additionality. And this is going to repeatedly come up. And I'm looking forward to like actually listening to everyone uh, in Chicago next week to understand like how we should handle these questions of boundaries and additionality. Uh, there's quite this temporal boundaries, like what about like, you know, what startup date do you use to qualify for voluntary credits? And there's also physical boundaries, like where exactly, how do you draw like a, the map around where the project starts and ends to do a proper life cycle analysis? Um, and additionality, this is like a very uh, sort of a tough um, subject to approach as well. From a regulatory perspective, like if there are like you know regional regulations um, that exist that prevent uh, that, that you know that, that that have for example if there's like a landfill diversion mandate, then does that um, uh, you know does that eliminate a project's eligibility? We more, yeah, it probably would. But then how do you kind of apply that across um, the whole country? And, um, and these are some of the questions and challenges that we really look forward to um, addressing in this broader methodology. So um, I, again, like you know, th these uh, we could spend like the next two hours just discussing one of these. Uh, but I'm going to uh, really encourage all of you to attend Biogas Americas next week and be part of the workshop where we will be um, actively do doing a deep dive into some of these subjects. Uh, Brad or Zach, do you have anything to add to this? Next slide, please. So uh, just kind of like wrapping all this up, um, what we really want to do is create a consistent way to measure the full impact of biogas projects. And I'm using sort of the uh, UN um, SDGs as an example of a broad range of environmental impacts that are possible. And what stands between any project, a, a, a biogas project or any other project, and, uh, and the ability to clearly state the environmental impacts of the project is a life cycle impact assessment. And so that's what we're doing, but that's, that's a fundamental tool we're using to create this methodology is, uh, it's really a framework for life cycle impact assessment. And um, if you, if we can establish the rules of this, then anyone can actually like, uh, can, can take down this methodology and do its own life cycle impact assessment and clearly articulate the benefits and full impact of a biogas project. Um, we in this phase we are only going to address greenhouse gas emissions but uh but this is just a first step and there's no reason why after this you couldn't create a broader uh, methodology that will address uh, other like impacts as well that is outside of greenhouse gas um, emissions uh for example uh you know there are um, this is like sort of the beauty of biogas projects is that um the, may I, as you articulate these things uh, it can not only create potentially new revenue streams, but it can also win public support for projects. And um, I mean, there are many parts of the world where, where you know, waste management infrastructure uh, is at its infancy. 
And uh, biogas projects could potentially play a big, big role in not only creating new revenue streams to support investments and building good infrastructure, but um, also that will ultimately result in like better sanitation, better um, you know air quality, cleaner water, uh, better standard of living. So um, I think there's a lot of here that we are still unpacking, um, but this is really what we're doing today is like the first step towards the kind of creating this comprehensive story uh, about all the good that a biogas project can actually bring. Uh, next slide, please. So as we do this, um, I kind of um, do want us to, uh, you know, uh, to state very clearly and stress that it's important to follow carbon accounting principles. These principles were set by WRI, the World Resource Institute, as general guiding principles on all um, LCAs and, um, and framework and methodology development. Uh, relevance, completeness, consistency, transparency, ac accuracy, and conservativeness. Uh, and this is again like uh, some of these areas that we will be doing a deep dive into on Tuesday in, in Chicago to uh, understand how to best apply these uh, in the context of additionality and the context of establishing boundaries. Um, how do you make sure that um, uh, you, you know the conservativeness, the accuracy, and the transparency are being met? Um, yeah, and just to kind of uh, also touch on the subject of transparency, this workshop, the workshop in Chicago, and the ongoing stakeholder engagement process is all meant to drive transparency. We really want to stress the importance of submitting your feedback to us um, so we keep this a robust process. Um, what is life cycle impact assessment? Um, it's a it's a it's another way of saying life cycle analysis, um, but it just broadens the um, scope of life cycle analysis to involve in, to include um, other impacts outside of greenhouse gas emissions and uh, it can really do uh, it can be a comprehensive uh, measurement of all uh, environmental impacts of a project uh, they involve putting a uh, boundary around the project and measuring all the inputs and outputs uh, what's being extracted from the inf environment that is those are all the inputs and what is being released into the environment are all the outputs and then once you create a framework and you want to create a functional unit, which is the end product, then uh, the methodology, it, it kind of um, lays out the system to do this. We follow, um, I mean, ISO standards in doing life cycle impact assessments so, um, so that, that there's like consistency and credibility in all the outputs that are put out. Next slide, please. So um, I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm invite again, invite like Zach and uh, Brad to comment on this. Uh, but broadly, of all biogas projects, we've divided them into four groups um, landfills, water treatment plants, uh, animal manure digestion, and other waste digestion. And the outputs are also broadly divided into four groups uh, renewable natural gas, electricity, heat, and digestate. And these are the target areas. Um, so um, as we go about uh, writing this methodology and uh, giving you the tools to do a carbon intensity measurement, uh, they will all address like these four project types and these four outputs. Um, anything you want to add to that, Brad? No, I think that captures it well. I think you could go down an endless rabbit hole for various project types. So what we're trying to do is group those into reasonable groups. I think the industry generally uh, re recognizes those four key project types um, and also the outputs. I know qu a question we've gotten before is, what about biogas as a feedstock to other sources, whether that's maybe hydrogen production or what if you're using biogas to lower the CI of ethanol? Really what our goal here is to calculate the carbon impacts and the carbon intensity of that biogas. And then you, whether you do electricity, whether do you do RNG, you can carry that carbon intensity score and that analysis to the next product. So if you're going to produce a hydrogen, you'll know what the CI score is of that biogas to RNG or of that biogas to electricity. If you were gonna use that, R, that biogas or that RNG, in uh, say an ethanol plant to lower the carbon intensity score of the ethanol, you would still un you would have a better understanding of what that CI score is relative to that to the product going forward. So as Shashi said, this is in no means a, a, a fully comprehensive list, and it's impossible to you know narrow it in narrow in on every single scenario. But generally, these are the the eight categories that 
we felt uh, are, are, will, will serve a vast majority of the biogas industry. But again, I, I think this is where stakeholder engagement and really getting your feedback. What are we missing here? What should we consider? We really want to have that overall engagement with the industry to make this as comprehensive as possible because uh, as Patrick said, as Shashi said, this methodology is really only going to be useful if the industry uses it. And we, we wanted to put some parameters around this, but especially early on in this phase one, we really do want to start out with more of a blank slate. And so if you have individual feedback or comments about either project types or the outputs that this project is looking at, please uh, let us know, please engage in some of these discussions. Zach's gonna close out the discussion with ways you can engage and uh, certainly provide uh, as much of that feedback uh, as you can. Next slide. I'll oh, sure. talk a little yeah. bit about system boundaries here. Um, and I think many of you are likely familiar with the LCA system boundaries that, again, I keep drawing back to the California Air Resources Board and the, and the LCFS standards because they've done what we're trying to do with carbon accounting specific to transportation fuel that is used in California. So they went through this entire process and looked at where do we set the boundaries for each one of these project types? They have tier one calculators for key for key project types. And then um, they're also focused on, on those outputs and those end uses. This overall approach will be, will be similar of where do you set the system boundaries from a feedstock production? So a good example of that is, let's say you have a landfill biogas facility. Um, right now, the common assumption is that that landfill has to collect that gas. That gas was probably being flared before. So the system boundary has been established generally across uh, uh, the industry, especially with the LCFS program as you're, we're going to assume you have a covered landfill because you have to at a certain landfill size. And we're going to assume that you were baseline flaring this before. Well, that may not fully capture all of the environmental benefits of, of what you, are, you all are trying to do, say, at a landfill. There's technologies out there that say they can collect more landfill gas, so they can reduce the fugitive emission, methane emissions from that covered landfill. Right now in the, in the LCFS methodology, there's really no way to take advantage of those additional biogas benefits but there is, in, in a couple of the private registries, there is a specific protocol that uh, takes that into account. So our goal is to really uh, scan the entire compliance market and regulated market and the voluntary market and create a more inclusive best of both worlds scenario that will uh, allow for the measurement of a wider range of projects and a wider range of, of outputs. And you can carry that same conversation from feedstock production, feedstock collection, fuel production to transportation and end use. And the example here is right now, if, if you know, if you ask somebody, maybe somebody's looking at investing in one of your, your, your projects, they may ask you, what's the carbon intensity score of your landfill gas project or of your food waste digester? Uh, the, the, the readily available tools, again, the CARB Tier 1 calculator, you can get a carbon intensity score for that facility, but that carbon intensity score is based on physical pipeline transport of that, of that RNG or of that biogas to California and combusting that as vehicle fuel. Well, you may not be selling into the California market, so this methodology really needs to take into account varying transportation distances, and then also varying end uses. So if you're gonna do uh, fuel combustion, that's relatively established out there, but what about thermal energy? Um, what does that look like? If you're not compressing that RNG or that biogas to 3,600 PSI and, and dispensing that into a vehicle, the carbon accounting and the carbon intensity scoring is different. So what we plan to do is take a look at 
adding in that thermal and process energy electricity use into this methodology and into this calculation. So you as a project developer, project owner, project investor can have a better idea of what's the more real time or more uh, applicable carbon intensity score rather than using the like a California GREET model as the as the baseline. So we'll still follow the same principles. You looked at all the the direct and indirect environment uh, environmental benefits, but our, our goal is to establish these baselines and establish the parameters uh, for these major categories in each of those four uh, project types, and then also in each of those four output types. The one thing to mention here also is digestate has really been a not forgotten, but the environmental benefits um, have have gone largely unnoticed in the industry. Um, and we really want to bring that back in this methodology. And ABC has been very, very supportive of bio of digestate uh, uh, incentives and programs. This methodology can also be applied to digestate. And we'll look at the overall system boundaries and attempt to quantify, have a tool and a methodology to quantify the environmental uh, impacts and the emissions impacts of selling your digestate as a, you know, as a fertilizer rather than uh, purchasing synthetic fertilizer, fertilizer that may come from overseas. And that's an area where we want to, to dig into that the overall uh, industry hasn't necessarily uh, taken a look at yet. Shashi, Zach, anything else to add on, on boundaries that we haven't covered? Hey. You can go on to the next slide, please. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Zach to talk a little bit more about the project timeline and what are some of the milestones and, and how do you engage in this overall process to, to, to provide input or to be part of this uh, team that frame that frames up the the overall carbon accounting methodology zach yeah, perfect thank you brad and thank you shashi that was that, that was really good so yeah as brad said how do we how do we get this done um and and that's what really excites me and so uh you know not only do do i get the chance to bring in um a, a really diverse group from our from our own internal team um our rng our biogas guys our our LCA guys, our voluntary markets guys, our marketing. It's, uh, you know, I, I also have access to to the experts there to ABC. And then more importantly, um, you know, all, all of you. Uh, and, and I think one thing that I'll, I'll point out as you look at kind of our phase one, two, and three is that stakeholder engagement happens along the, the entire process. And so, um, you know, I, I, we've kind of been harping on this, but it's, it's absolutely critical, right, that we, that we get, um, you know, your feedback and in your comments, because uh, the more that we can gather, the better this methodology, the better this tool is going to be. Um, but where are we at today, right? So we've the last month or so, we've been working to to really um, have a have an outline and, and really lay the, the the ground blocks to to this to the framework. And right now, we've we've kind of done that just internally, and so um you know the the kind of the, the the phase 1b now kicks off today and so um obviously we're we're introducing this to to all of you and uh and and then after we're going to give you guys uh the ability to to provide that feedback and so those are those are really the the, the two milestones that we had here in the first couple of months um and it kind of culminates with next week's uh workshop at biogas of americas and uh and so yeah we're we're looking forward to that um, but then post biogas Americas, what are we what are we trying to do? Uh, we want to this summer we want to obviously finalize those success metrics for 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 buyer acceptance, right? And 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 really have a good idea on on you know at, at the end of the day what uh, what does that success look like? And and obviously we're working through that right now, uh, but that'll be one of the the, the key things to do uh, late May early June. Uh, and, and then we get into, you know, after that first round of stakeholder engagement, we're, we hope to deliver a, a working draft uh, of what this thing is, is going to look like um, and, and followed by, you know, another round of stakeholder engagement. And so 
Uh, I, I think this summer will be really exciting. Um, we'll have we'll have uh, another public webinar uh, on the agenda uh, for for everyone um, to to get an update on on where we're at, and uh, and and that kind of moves us into the last phase. So um, you know, hopefully uh, another another speaking engagement outside of Biogas Americas. We've got a couple of conferences that we're that we're going to try to target. Um, and in really delivering, uh, you know, that, that second almost, almost complete draft of the methodology, uh, along with our last, uh, our last asks for, for stakeholder engagement. So, uh, I, yeah, I think this summer it'll be, it'll be a quick summer, uh, but, uh, hopefully very exciting. And, uh, and, and when we get to the fall, um, you know, we hope to hand over this, this methodology, this tool, um, that, uh, like like Patrick and Shashi said that we can you know it, any of the uh, any of the stakeholders can can pick up and and utilize and um, and then moving forward from there I think you know obviously creating the tool is 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 part one um, but we hope to to lay out the you know what does 2024 look like and 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 you know hopefully give the bio, uh, ABC a, a plan on on you know how how does the industry adopt this thing? Because I think obviously having a, a well crafted method, methodology and tool is great, um, but uh, just as important is is, is making sure um, you know uh, it, it's it's adopted. And so um, as we as we engage with stakeholders through the summer, it'll be uh, it'll be really important for us uh, obviously to 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 be connected to um, to all those groups that we mentioned earlier. Uh, next next slide, please. Um, so what, what, what can you, what's our next steps? What are we going to do, um, post, uh, our, our engagement here today? Uh, like I said, you guys are going to get the chance to deliver your feedback. Uh, we've got a, a web form, uh, a digital survey, uh, the, that we'll send out, uh, that the link is there. I think it might even get dropped in the chat here soon. Uh, and, and what's really neat about this is, it, uh, it it's more than just a survey. Uh, it, it's there. There's context behind it, and there's you know there's guidance behind kind of each category. And so hopefully it is set up in a way that is very user friendly um, and provides a lot of optionality uh, for you as a as a stakeholder to to provide feedback. And and I think one thing to note too is if you know if you get through the end of that thing and uh, there's there's something that you haven't covered right there's or that we haven't covered or might have missed, there's going to be opportunity for you to um, to, to uh, fill in a box of of, of anything um, that that again we missed or or might seem relevant. Um, we talked about Biogas Americas next week, uh, so we will be on site. Uh, it's a two-hour workshop, I believe, from 2 p.m. Uh, to to 4 p.m. Hopefully, I got that right. And uh, and you know, really a chance for us to expand on what we've talked about today uh, in person and, and have those face to face conversations um, and, and, you know, and take in all that feedback. And um, I, I think between our, our digital survey here and, and Biogas Americas, hopefully, you know, in a few weeks, we've, we've, we've amassed a good, um, a good response and, and can take that directly toward uh, what we're working on in that tool. Like I said, we'll have another public webinar, so just look for the announcement for that, uh, similar to what we did today, but but uh, really just uh, informative as to where we're at in the project. And um, and then and then again, there'll be uh, there'll be another round of uh, of digital uh, feedback um, uh, web form opportunities. So yeah, I, I think. I think that just is a is a snapshot of stakeholder engagement. Uh, hopefully, it's it's uh, it's suitable and, like I said, user friendly. And um, you know, we can't we we can't thank you guys enough for taking a uh, a few minutes and 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 really providing that feedback. And then the last, I think the last slide before we maybe open up to a, to a quick Q and A. Kind of that that final next step. So I think for for all of the ABC membership here. Uh, I, I know um, we want to encourage you to work with your the the carbon market steering committee. Uh, I, they're they're going to be the the folks that we're reporting into um, monthly, and we'll have a, a a lot of contact with obviously throughout this 
project. Uh, so a great committee to get involved with there. Um, and yeah, I think I think I've covered everything else. So Patrick, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably just leave it to you for any final comments, and then um, yeah, then maybe a little Q and A. Yeah, thanks. Uh, really appreciate you guys covering all of that, and uh, looking forward to seeing a lot of you at the at the workshop next week. We've got a bunch of questions coming in, so let's go ahead and and dive right into those. Um, you can see the instructions up there if you're not sure how to use the questions panel um, to get into that. Um, and I'm going to try to bunch a bunch of them into a few questions here. So there are a lot of questions about. Um, is the methodology going to include this or is it going to include that? So I'll just list list those things. Um, Co-digestion projects, uh, SAF, uh, sustainable aviation fuel, hydrogen from biogas, uh, carbon capture of the CO2 in the biogas. Um, are any of those things going to not be included or outside the scope of the methodology at this point? Um, yeah, that's a, those are great questions. Um, you know, I think um, the it's difficult to go into each one of them in detail. I think Brad kind of touched on how after the RNG leaves the uh, is injected into a pipeline, it could be converted into hydrogen. It could be converted, then the hydrogen could be used in a refinery. Um, you know, and could be converted to SAF. And there's um, endless possibilities, and that flexibility of biogas is actually what makes it so valuable. Um, however, at this first cut, I think we'll probably stop at the point where it is uh, perhaps injected into the pipeline and then there's a transportation like distance that can be calculated at the extraction point. And uh, we can create a baseline around uh, natural gas. Um, and so uh, that, if we can get to that much of the life cycle analysis and get a good solid methodology for all that that applies to all these different kinds of biogas projects then i think adding at the end a steam methane reformer um, or um, adding a like a new technology on how that rng or the electricity will be used that won't be difficult um, and that could be easily an add-on to the existing framework i do see this as a continuous sort of process it's, i don't think it's a once and done sort of thing so uh, what we're doing here is taking that first step towards creating a solid foundation and then even if we um, don't get to some of the uh, the finer like sort of like the you know the hydrogens and the SAFs I think um, that that's, that's just maybe because like we just did not have the time to do that right now and there has to be a phase two and a phase three when all those things are added on so the full story of biogas can be told um brad is that like your understanding as well for sure yeah and i think to answer the co-digestion question because that comes up a lot is yes the intent is for this methodology to encompass co-digestion and not be as rigid as say the rfs or pre proposed preset rule proposed rules where you have to put these things in separate tanks and co-digestion is uh discouraged in some of the regulated markets the goal of this carbon accounting system would be to really reflect practice in operations and we all know co-digestion um, really impacts the overall operations and oftentimes streamlines and smooths out and enhances uh, performance of anaerobic digesters the goal of this carbon accounting methodology would be to take that into account what about what about things that are slightly different but kind of related here like um, carbon capture of the of the co2 from the biogas or um, you know rotation of uh, the or not rotation, but recycling of the digested material to crops that might be interim crops, you know, cover crops or prairie grasses or something like that, and then harvesting those crops. So you're sequestering carbon in that process, and then you're harvesting those crops to put it back into the biogas system. Are any of those kind of add-on systems or add-on pieces of the project? Do you think that will be within the the boundaries of the project here or outside? Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, one way to look at this is the um, is to do uh, is to create a, a good solid uh, framework for the that will impact the vast uh, the largest number of projects. So if this is again something I'm looking forward to uh, next week in Chicago is to understand like what are some of these uh, things that uh, you know if you if you were to invest uh, like a, 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 
the time and effort required to model out the um, some sort of a land application of um, digestate and some sort of an absorption of the carbon and the reuse of the carbon and how do you model all that like um, yeah I think like what we really need is feedback from the industry as to how important is that um, is, is that like one project or is there like a large number of projects that will be that will benefit from this and that's kind of like, that's the kind of feedback that will also really guide us in making some of these decisions on what to include and what not to include. Uh, so we're certainly looking forward to that level of engagement. And uh, uh, from what we see is that the four types of projects we listed there, landfills, water treatment plants, manure digestion, and sort of like this other waste category, in which I think food waste um, and perhaps um, other sort of like um, biomass waste could, um, and agricultural crops could like all fit into that other waste category. The um, the question I would like really want to an answer to, and perhaps we can like dive into this in Chicago, is what should be included in that bucket, um, and uh, which projects will be uh, the you know how many projects are there that will be beneficiaries of these sort of methodologies. And again, as I said, like you know, just even if we don't include something in this round phase one, that does not mean that like as the methodology expands. And as we uh, build out, like you know, 2.0 and 3.0, that you that, that that these projects would not be included. The question is like now or later. Okay, thank you. Let's uh, let's talk about um, standards, LCA standard, life cycle assessment standards, and also engagement with policy. So, uh, two part question here. First part is. Um, are you using uh, the ISO, ISO um, LCA standards or any other standards in terms of as as a baseline um, standards for creating the methodology? Yeah, so we yeah we definitely like you know everything we do we try to follow the ISO standard unless there is a regulated standard that kind of supersedes that. Um, so in the case of California, they have a um, way of doing it that like it's very explicitly laid out. But in the absence of that, we typically tend to default to an ISO standard to create an LCA. Um, it, but, uh, in this, um, uh, it, we're starting off using the California GREET, uh, sorry, not the California GREET, the GREET model, the Argon GREET model as sort of the starting point as a tool to do the, uh, the model building out. And we are also looking at the California pathways, the California um, uh, sort of greed assumptions to understand what are the gaps that exist uh, over there. And then we are using the Argon greed model as sort of the basis to um, start building out. And, and policy-wise, so there's a lot of questions that we've gotten here on um, how will you engage with, how will we engage with CARB? Um, what about other clean fuel standards um, other than California? How does this methodology get uh, integrated into those processes? What about uh, with EPA and the RFS because they've started to uh, they've started to um, talk about getting into life cycle assessment uh, considerations for some of the things in the RFS um, as well? What kind of engagement um, do you expect here? On the on the policy side, and I know in some respects that's a question for the ABC. You know, after we create the methodology here, but you all are in this space a lot. What's your get out your crystal ball? What do you think happens? You know, this is basically like post creation of the methodology, or maybe even engagement along the way. How do you expect to see that happening? Uh, yeah, Patrick, I think it's uh, go ahead. Right. Oh, as I say, Patrick, I think that part of that engagement is along the way as well, and being able to get, solicit that feedback. I know Shashi has had several conversations with some of the voluntary carbon market, markets out there, and they're very, they're excited about learning more about the methodology and how this can play into their various, their carbon markets. And same thing with regulated and policy. The goal here is to create a more universal biogas carbon accounting framework. And for future policy, it would be great if uh, future policy would adopt this methodology or the concepts around this methodology to again unify the industry solidify move towards a more commonly accepted carbon accounting framework for all of biogas and right now it's it's kind of carb out on carb and and oregon and a, and, a, and a couple of the registries that are really receptive to biogas out on their islands um, and they don't all play super well together and th that's where that gap analysis came into play 
So our goal is to really broaden that overall framework and let policymakers use that as a tool when they're creating maybe the you know New York LCFS or a New New Mexico LCFS type program, because the industry hopefully will coalesce around a, a more common uh, carbon accounting methodology and, and carbon and carbon intensity scoring uh, process. That's right. Our intention right now is to uh, provide a an unbiased tool that can actually be used for the kind of purposes that Brad listed. And uh, if we can provide a, a good and effective tool, uh, and you know, I think like in the hands of the American Bankers Council and and all of you, we hope that that tool will be put to good use and presented to emerging policies, uh, emerging regulations and regulators, uh, and say, hey, here's a you don't need to recreate the wheel. Here's something that's already done that you can use to um, build your own life, uh, clean uh, clean fuels programs. Well, I'm I'm uh, I'm pouring through all the questions here, and thank you all for for engaging so much. Um, and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna generalize a lot of them here and say that we've got there's a lot of interest, right? Uh, there's a lot of people showing up today, even more uh, that have registered for this, and a, there a lot of questions are coming in about, hey, what about what about my project? Or I do this with my project. Um, how is that going to be accounted for? Um, and, and lagoon cleanouts, which I realize is kind of not an individual project question. That's kind of um, that's that's uh, referencing CARB's approach to what's happening with the LCFS and, and the carbon intensity of that. So it's a little not quite in that category. It's kind of like you know different different kind of apple. Um, but um, I think I think probably the best thing to do for those types of questions is to engage in the workshop and engage. Um, with the Carbon Markets Committee. If you're not already a member of the ABC, join the ABC. If you are a member, just email us and say, hey, I want to be added to the Carbon Markets Committee, and we'll just put you on the Carbon Markets Committee. But I think for those kinds of questions, that's probably the best place to, to cover those. Is that right, um, guys, or is that, would you suggest something else? Right. No, I, I would agree. But also, feel free to use the tool provided uh, to submit um, sort of feedback and comments. So we, 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 there's a we've created like a standard set of questions that we want you to answer related to some of these issues. But for things that are more specific to a project, feel free to send us that information um, because the more the broader the uh, you, you know the the broader the range of inputs we receive, uh, the more nuanced and the more robust the overall framework and methodology will be. So, um, in the spirit of like uh, full transparency and inclusiveness, yeah, I absolutely want to encourage all of you to submit uh, your project types um, and the specific issues you're struggling with. Like, what is it that prevents you from clearly stating your environmental impact to a buyer or to finding a, the the, um, the a pathway to commercialization? Um, so ultimately, these projects are making the world a better place, and uh, we need to find a way for them to do it. I would also say in that in, in that engagement and feedback is what do you see as the hurdles or roadblocks for implementation and how would you use this methodology in selling or pitching investment how would you selling this to a buyer what are some of the the issues that you face right now can this methodology make those conversations more streamlined more consistent more cohesive in addition to project types, really that level of feedback is what we're looking for. Um, really want it, that, that will come a little bit later in that phase three that Zach is saying is how do we go about getting more broad industry adoption? But the more information that we have up front, the better uh, when we're working through this. And then the next step, obviously getting that draft of the framework of the first methodology, we'll have two more at least two more rounds of of, of engagement. So. This is a really good, you know, call it a fact-finding mission in phase one to see what are you facing, what are the project types. If you're pro if you feel like your your project type is being ignored in compliance or voluntary markets, this is a perfect opportunity to submit that feedback. I guarantee we'll read it. I guarantee we'll take it into consideration, and um, we'll we'll hope to release the draft of this first first round this summer. So uh, with respect to next step, I think the intention is to um, sort of you know email everyone who attends uh, attended this webinar um, uh, some of those like follow up links and slides and um, 
and then you can like kind of follow the links in there to uh, communicate with us and do what Brad and Patrick um, are asking. So just some big picture uh, questions here to close us out. Um, could you remind everyone what's the what's the final form um, of this of this project? Is it a calculation or a greenhouse gas inventory? framework there's kind of a related question here um asking if you'll have access if users will have access to a web app that can take in parameters and give the calculation for this project would help us uh help, sure. help our users in, envision the final product here correct yeah so it's not a tool like it wouldn't be a tool that will actually do the calculation it's more of a uh, a framework that defines what is a recommended uh, methodology to be followed? Like, what should be the boundary? What should be the baseline? What should be the uh, what should be included and excluded from the calculation of carbon intensity for these project types? Um, so that's really the purpose. It'll be more of a methodology report and not the tool itself. The tool will come after the methodology is written. Then you can kind of create a tool that meets the requirements uh, and the recommendations of the methodology and says check 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 and the third level after all that is you know once you use the tool and you create your calculation you may still need it to be validated um, but the first step in all this is to write the methodology and that's kind of where we are starting off let's take it one step further and talk about monetization so how does how does this get monetized mm -hmm. So the um, the first, um, I mean, you know, the, ideally this works for projects that don't neatly fit into existing um, commercial pathways, or the commercial uh, existing commercial pathways are not uh, sort of a valuable enough, um, uh, you know, sort of a revenue source. So if you have a buyer, uh, or if you can find a buyer who wants to buy the gas, uh, but the, but kind of like the, the resistance there is that hey, uh, you're not registered with a certain registry or you don't have a commercial pathway, but I think like, uh, but then the buyer has their own set of requirements, that, reporting requirements that don't really know how to, uh, what to do with your gas. That is the gap we're trying to fill. So in those situations, like, um, we hope to have a, you, you know, ready to use methodology you can take off the shelf and you can do the calculations to say, I'm following the American Biogas Council's recommended methodology to do my CI calculations. And this is the impact my gas is having. And then the buyer will also accept that. And then the monetization will happen and there'll be more sort of transactions and liquidity in the biogas markets. That is like the ideal sort of um, success story that we want to see from all this is that people using this methodology to articulate the clearly state the uh, environmental impact, the carbon intensity of their biogas. And buyers who are willing to say, yes, um, I like that. I want to uh, buy this gas and um, you can sign, a, sign me up for a 10-year deal. That's what we want to see. Patrick, I also think it's a good way to jumpstart the Digestate conversations. And I think, again, Digestate gets lost a little bit in the environmental benefits. Can we start to put some framework around that? That will be potentially maybe another revenue source um, uh, with, with quantifying those benefits. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. We're at the top of the hour here, um, and I, I bet a lot of people have meetings starting coming up. So I'm going to turn over to Caroline to close this out here. Um, thank you all very much for being a part of this, both in our audience and to Brad, Zach, and Shashi uh, for doing this as well. There's a lot more to come. Please engage with the ABC, and uh, here's some ways to do that. Caroline? Yeah, thanks, Patrick. Um, so first of all, we're going to have a survey pop up at the end of the webinar. Please fill out that survey. It helps us improve our webinars. Don't forget that you can become a member um, of the ABC. You can do so at AmericanBiogasCouncil.org slash membership. Um, and um, as discussed on today's webinar, we are having a workshop on this topic at Biogas Americas in Chicago next week. It is not too late to register for the conference or that workshop. So um, that's all at biogasamericas.com, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see you there. Thank you for attending this webinar. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye, everybody.